Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And today on the channel, I'm going to be joined by my good friend Smido. So let's give him a ring now. How are you doing, Smido? Oh, I'm not bad, I'm not bad. What are you up to? I've been at home today. Uh, yeah, I've been at home today, so I'm just packing up work now for me. What do you think to it all? Oh, it's a joke, isn't it? It's a joke. But, you know, like I was just saying to you earlier, we can't, can't be getting upset about it and raging. And I was a bit raging when the, when the news broke about this 25 quid last week. But, Regardless of whether it's 20 or 15 or 25, I still ain't buying it, so it don't, it don't affect me. Like, I didn't have a lot to say on that, that KSI YouTube thing, I didn't have a lot to say on that, because I wasn't watching it, I knew I wasn't watching it, so why waste my energy on it, you know? So that's, that's, kind of the, that's kind of the level I've got to. Um, at the end of the day, they're doing this 25 quid simply because they can. Because they can. Putting it up from 20 to 25, they would have tried to forecast it out, how many buyers they might have going on previous AJ events or whatever. Um, you know, if they get a million, if they get a million buyers for the Klitschko fight, they, they'll probably get the same amount of buyers for this fight, but they'll be able to charge 25% more. I mean, it's a win-win for them. Mm, it's pure greed, isn't it, Smith? Hey? Pure greed. Yeah, it's like you said, they can do it, can't they? And people have seen the first fight and they want to see the rematch, don't they? Yeah, I mean, but what I, I'll tell you what I do very much disagree with. I've just literally watched um, Eddie's done an interview with Boxing Social today in Liverpool and he's saying, you know, it's the biggest event of the year, it's one of the biggest heavyweight fights in history. Like, they weren't saying this before, you know, um, before the New York fight because at the end of the day, Ruiz was a, 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 a fat chubby late replacement that, that, shocked, that shocked them all. Um, it, you know, and he's saying, oh, I don't think it'll be a while before you see a £25 price point again. Well, it might not be, because if, if, if Joshua wins, and I hope he wins, don't get me wrong, if Joshua wins, he'll, he'll fight um, Fury or, or Wilder, hopefully. That's obviously going to be a bigger event than Ruiz, so what's that going to be, 30 quid? Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. That's what I was just Smith saying to Dennis now. Today. Yeah, Adam Smith's been out today saying, uh, oh well we've got different price points now, we've got 9.99, we've got 19.95 and now we've got 24.95. Like, you know, it's all, it's, but does that mean that this, what I'm worried about is, what this is what I'm worried about, what we've seen over the years is the, um, and as you mentioned, rightly so, the criteria for pay-per-view has, has obviously decreased over, over the years. And that, um, in the, the simple form, that has coincided with my um, falling out with the game, if you like. It's like, I don't follow it anywhere near like what I used to. And that is a direct result of, um, of, of pay-per-view because I've had enough to pay for it. Um, so what's going to happen, I think, now, as we've seen less and less uh, genuine world title fights on Sky, on, on normal Sky, as, as our friend Dale, Dale Nichols will tell us. Mm -hmm. I think what's going to happen now, the likes of um, this weekend, Callum Smith against Don Ryder, which I think is a good fight, that could work, that, this time next year, that same event could well be a tenner. You know, because they've tried this £10 model now. Yeah, yeah. I, think they, I think they might start chucking them, chucking them on there. So what we're going to end up on with Sky is fucking Monaco um, and a bit of next year and this golden contract. What do you think about uh, if, the, if they start doing ones that are five? Or, <laughs> do you know, it's possible, isn't it? I don't know, like, I mean, I mean that's, that's going down to like British title level, isn't it, really? I mean, yeah. I don't know, there's just no other sport in the whole world. I mean, I follow a lot of sports. Like, I am addicted to sports. And, you know, there's just no other sport that I have to pay extra money for. Like, you know, we had uh, 
City against Liverpool the other week, biggest game of the season so far. I didn't have to pay extra for that. Yeah. For 25 quid, I think I pay £57 a month for the whole Sky package. I think something like that. Um, so £25, it's almost you know 50% more than what I'm already paying in the month. To get all the channels, I've got to pay for one four-hour event. And it's for 25 quid. I mean, it's 50% more than what I'm paying on a monthly basis. You know what I mean? It's just... Right, and then, and then also, I'm going to put him up as well, fucking Bean, today, saying, um, oh, well, in America, you know, this weekend, Wilder and Wilder and um, Ortiz is, is $75 on, on, on their Fox or whatever it is. Mm. Well, yeah, but, that, you know, that's, um, they don't have to have monthly subscriptions of, like, over there like what we do. No, it's not don't, the same no. setup. But then, but then what he forgets, but then next week he'll have his design hat on and he'll say, oh, well, for $10 a month you get Golovkin against um, Darren Venchenko, you get Canelo and Kovalev, you get KSI Logan Paul and Joshua Reeves, all for $10 a month. So when it, when it um, suits him, he can talk about $75 for a pay-per-view Wilder, but then next week he'll be talking about $10 a month for how good it is. Make your fucking mind up. Did you know Adam Smith's shortlisted to work for the zone if his Sky deal ends? The transit, the trans sitting over, transitioning over, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I see where I see where you're coming from. Uh, my argument with all this pay per view is this: right, obviously, you know I'm a diehard Frotch fan. When the Frotch yeah. finished, when Frotch was in the Super Six, they said there's no pay per view because Davy Day and how or Audrey Harrison. And then David A came back and did uh, Vladimir. We, so they said there were no pay per view, didn't they? Yeah. Right, well, Frotch Boote, Frotch Ward, they weren't pay per view. Yeah. They were told no. Pardon? The thing is, like, and I'm, as a bigger, I'm as a bigger Frotch fan as what you are, Paul. Yeah. You know me, but, like, I can't really, like, go with that argument because the times have changed since then. Times have changed since then. Frotch was, wasn't. Aligned to anyone with a pay-per-view outlet when he was doing, when he was having all that amazing defences and the Jermaine Taylors and stuff like that, which was an absolutely incredible run of fighting, you know, world champions, future, past or present, you know. It'll never be matched. That run will never be matched by a UK fighter. I know, and I think that you know, I don't think he gets in there enough um, enough respect or props for that. But the run no. that he's due to, and I will admit this, even as a die-hard props fan. When he sat on the side of that um, that apron after the first Groves fight, you know a lot of his fans went out the window then. And yeah, they did. Yeah, has, has gone since then, unfortunately. Um, hey, did you see that Gloves of Rossi the other day where Frock said, um, Frock said, yeah, Howard Foster, man, mate, you knew the script. <laughs> yeah, well, do you know why he said that? He's trying to, he, he's trying to like be dry and have a make a joke at it because he's done now, isn't it? Yeah. He's done. Yeah. But do you know what I was upset about? And I actually texted him last night, but he hadn't text back, but I actually texted him and I said, why is David A going on about everybody sat here has been knocked out? Did you see Carl correct it when he got his chance to speak? Yeah, he said he'd been knocked out. So now I've, I've been knocked down twice, but I've never been knocked out in sparring, in amateur or in pros. I, I was waiting for it, I was watching it, and I said to my mate, I says, any minute now, He's gonna say I've never been stopped, but all them there have been stopped, haven't they? Yeah. But uh, but no, I felt sorry for him sat with them last night because I felt that the the uh, they all spoke o over each other, didn't they? Yeah, and then they were like, trying to take the piss out of him a couple of times about that. Like, the first time was fine about it when they said, "Oh, from how many people saw you knock out Groves?" But then they like kept on with it, and then, you know I'm not sure about that. But you got Bell, you and Hay who, who hated each other to get. Sat there next to each other like best mates. Going on holiday together now, mate. Oh, it's no, it's no, hey? it's no, good, no good that. I mean, David Day's the biggest man in boxing. Well, you know my argument with David Hay, right? He got pay per view shut down twice, didn't he? Yeah. Right? And and then he, and then he cancelled on two fights with Fury at Wembley, didn't he, right? Then he goes missing for years, comes back four and a half year later. Gets a two fight deal with Dave Channel for two million quid net. Yeah. Yeah. They give him a Plaza Hotel, give him an hotel for five years to live in free with all his meals. 
So he's got Plaza and Hotel all over everything, right? Rent free, because you don't need a car in London, do you? He gets all that, and then he gets two pay-per-view fights on Sky against Tony Bellew. Well, let's, well, let's have it right. He was ready for Knacker's Yard after a London Macabre, wasn't he? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they all built it up, and when he came back for a rematch, he was sending pictures and videos and Instagram of him doing twists and exercises and all that. And do you remember what he said, don't you? Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And they were all sat around that table, and you heard what Nelson said, didn't you? He said, well, we've all, he sat there and he said, yeah, we've all made millions out at fight game, but friendship aside, what were all that about? They all had to pick who they think is going to beat AJ. Sorry, it who's going to win So between AJ and Ruiz. But let me tell you this. How many people have been dropped four times and quit, have come back and won't rematch? Oh, well, not that happen all that often, does it? It's what he's going to do, he's going to keep it long, isn't he? Yeah. I want him to win, but, you know... Oh, I don't. I don't know what the, I don't know what the excuses were the last time that, you know, many And I've got a theory about it. Do you know when it comes to end, right, at that fight when they're saying he quit? Do you know what I think? I think David Hayes, right, he touched on something. He's used to it being the Joshua show, isn't he, right? I think he walked to, he walked over to that corner. And do you know, like, when he fought Parker? When he fought Parker, every time he got in trouble, the referee jumped in the middle of them, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And I think... He thought that the referee were going to let him have a long break. Now, if you count the times that he went down, he had a long, long time each time, didn't he? And I think the referee thought, do you know what? He's had enough now. He's been down four times. Do you know what I mean? He, he can't have any more chances, can he? And like I said to you months and months ago, I think that this going to Saudi gives them, gives them the... It, it, it protects him in the future. And by that, I mean... Um, if Joshua was, I think if Joshua is to lose this rematch, it would be more damaging if Joshua lost in Cardiff or London than it would be if he lost in Saudi. I reckon that if he loses in Saudi, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not going to be as, as prevalent all over the papers. It's, because it's not as accessible to British fans um, in terms of, you know, attending the event, the media coverage, etc. I think that they can. Uh, not brush it under the carpet, but they can move on. Then it's easier to move on if he loses in Saudi than if he lost in Cardiff, for example. And like you said, you know, he might end up going on a bit of a world tour with no belts on the line, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, I, I want him to win. I think he can win. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to put money on it. Um, yeah, I think, I think he can win. But, you know, it's just, uh, it, you know, history often with these rematches does, does repeat itself. It could easily repeat itself again. I mean, Ruiz knows what he's got to do. It was, it appeared to be, you know, we can make all the excuses we want about Joshua. It appeared to be no fluke. Um, you know, it wasn't a flash knockdown. There was four knockdowns, as you say. Ruiz has just got to go in and do exactly what he did last time. Well, the saying, right, that Joshua could be fighting in... Uh 
Nigeria next year if he loses against Ruiz. Now, what, what I think is going to happen is, Ruiz beats him, they're then going to throw him in with Wilder, it's going to be one champion, one belt, innit? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. We know that's going to happen now, don't we? Right, but the point I'm trying to make is this, right? Joshua, like I've just said, he'll be fighting your Dillian Whites and people like that, then you're going to have Edward, Sir Edward, coming out saying, it's not about the belts, Anthony Joshua, He's had the belts before, it's not about the belts. It's about going on a world tour and him seeing his people. That's what you're gonna hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're gonna be we're gonna be messed about like that, mate. That's what's gonna happen. Well, but, that, or he just retires. Yeah, well he'll have enough money, won't he? Yeah, he's gonna have a load he's gonna have a load of money, yeah. I mean I saw I saw him a week ago down here, uh, they look like they'd all been on a run at uh, not far from AJ Hobson's scrapyard. Shout out Innovation Alloys, one of my backers. Uh, I saw them all, Joshua, and it looked like a load of thugs, all in woolly hats. <laughs> looked like they'd all been out on a run. But, uh, but like I said, good luck to him, but I'm going to go on record now and say I want Andy Ruiz to beat Anthony Joshua, I'm not bothered if it's on points or by knockout, I want him to beat him and I want both men to get home safe to the families. Now all them on there last night, right, I'm not going to say who, but I'm telling you now, not everybody that was sat there on that sky last night wants Joshua to win. So we'll leave it at that, eh? <laughs> well they're not going to say that, are they? No, he couldn't, could he? Because he knows in his heart, well, not giving an answer, uh, Nelson said, so you're saying he's going to lose then? But David A knows boxing, right? He's been around it all his life, and Carl Frotch knows boxing as well. And they know that if you get dropped four times, you're not going to win rematch. He's been in that rematch for commercial reasons. And let me tell you this. He's going there, they've got him losing all kinds of weight and doing all kinds of things that's not natural to him. If he wants to put weight on and eat what he wants and lift weights, let him do it because it's got him so far, hasn't it? Now they're trying to change everything because they want to get the win. They want to keep him earning, don't they, right? But like I said, Eddie Hearn will know the numbers on Joshua now and he'll see that he's not as popular as he thought, they thought he was. But he's going to spin it and say, it's a bigger fight than ever now, and he's glad he lost. He's glad he lost because of commercial possibilities. Nah, 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 I'm not having that. They didn't want him to lose. Well, everyone just thought you'd knock him out, Debbie's American debut, and, and on you go from there onto the Wilders and stuff like that. Absolutely. But it is a bigger, it's definitely a bigger fight now than Joshua and Anthony Joshua was when they first fought. I mean, I didn't even get up and watch it live last time. I just thought it was a... You know, naive left, foregone conclusion, you know, Joshua will beat Ruiz, five weeks notice, blah, blah, blah. And obviously he's upset the apple cart, it does make it into a bit of a fight, but it's not a, you know, it's not a bit, it's talking like it's one of the biggest fights in the history of the heavyweight division. What? Do you know when you get knocked out, right? Do you know fighters when they got uh, when they get done like that? They don't really want to go fight them because the style the styles match. Now when Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson, right? There were plenty of time for Mike Tyson to rematch him, but he didn't want to go near him, did he? He didn't go near him, and I, and I don't think, right, that I don't think that Joshua really wants to fight him and. They all kept saying it's for commercial reasons and Bellew were doing the biggest cheerleading, one not Did you see it? Yeah. Bellew's embarrassing when you mention Joshua, isn't it? He is embarrassing. I mean, didn't he even say that he quit? Did he say he quit? I'm sure he said he quit. Now he's saying that... Oh, hardcore fans, check if he said he quit. But, uh, two seconds, Phil, two seconds. Hello, Porky's Corner. Can you call me back? I'm just filming. Right. Well, mate, no. I'm just saying, Bell, you said he quit. Now he's saying there's no quit in him because he comes from Watford. Oh my God, what's all that about? Eh? No quit in him because he comes from Watford. Oh. <laughs> We're being lied to again. We're going to have these now, bigging this up for the week in Saudi. 
And you, we're going to see all this cringing. Stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. We're going to have all this to put up with now. For, for, for a week, mate. It's going to be totally embarrassing. It's going to be embarrassing, mate. But yeah. what can you do? It's, uh, it's just shocking, mate. I, I'm disappointed with them there. I'm, to be honest with you, in my opinion, right, Ruiz does him again. I just think he's, he's got one of them styles that's too much for him. He's too well scored, he's an attacking boxer. And let me tell you, this I had him beating Parker, you know. Yeah, I didn't watch that fight. He didn't get a decision there, so he knows his way around a, ri a ring right, like that Ruiz. And I just think that sometimes you come up against a style and you can't, you, you can't walk through. It's like Joshua's, very similar to Froch. It's all explosive and you know hard work and they're based on hard work. The straight one two merchants aren't they? Do you know what I mean? And, and fitness gets you through and that but I just think he's come up against the style that he it, it can't, it can't do not with. What do you think? Well that's, I think it'll be a good, I think it'll be a good fight. Um, I want Joshua to win but I just don't know you know, what he's going to do different because he's all straight shots and Ruiz was absolutely hell bent on countering him every time he threw a shot. Um, Ruiz beats him for speed. Um, obviously he proved he's got a better chin in the last fight because that lockdown Joshua, when Joshua put him down, knocked very heavy, but well, Ruiz actually recovered really quickly from it. I mean, it was a lovely knockdown from Joshua, don't get me wrong. That left door, I think there was an uppercut in there as well, and he went down heavy, and then Joshua was obviously trying to follow up. Ruiz just thought, right, fuck it, we'll fight fire with fire, and that's what he did, and that's, that's what won him the fight there. Joshua's the man that's got to change for this fight, not, not Ruiz. Ruiz can just do the same again and he'll probably do it better. He's had a longer camp, more confident. He'll probably be fitter, obviously, with the longer camp than that, as long as the, the, the money in the newfound fame hasn't got to his head too quickly. Um, I think they've took the rematch, um, Joshua, because if he didn't take the rematch, then they're just going to end up going over to Hamer and Wilder and the belts will be gone forever. So yeah. I think he's had to take the rematch for a number of reasons. Um, obviously, it's worth it commercially, etc., etc. But you know, does he really? Does he really want to be there? I think we'll find out. I mean, he's been pretty quiet so far in the build-up. He's been away, hasn't he? No, no real interviews or, or out there in the public camp, uh, public eye. Last time we had Lucas Aid adverts and interviews left, right, and centre. He's obviously been put away, so he's clearly taking it serious as he should be. It'll be interesting to see how he, how he behaves and reacts on. On fight week, I thought he was way too happy before the fight last time, doing selfies with Ruiz, letting him have pictures with his belt. He was way too happy after the fight, immediately after the fight, as far as I was concerned. Almost looked relieved to have lost, and that it was over. Wait, I didn't like that. I want to see, I want to see this, the, you know, the street drug dealer Femi back, to be honest, in, in, in the build up to this. So, the, I think the build up is going to be interesting. Um, they'll obviously wheel out all the normal bullshit, but. Yeah, like I say, it's a good fight, I'm just, it's just I won't be buying it for 25 quid. I'm out actually anyway that night, so I'll be watching, I will be watching it. Um, will we be watching it in a pub? What you say? Will you be watching it in a pub? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm out, um, yeah, I'm out with a few, a few of my mates in Wigan, yeah, so I'm just going to be out and, and watching it. I think it's on at a reasonable time as well, isn't it, like 9 o'clock, so... Yeah, is it 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock or something, you actually ring walk, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's good for... Manchester Derby that day as well, you know, Porky, you know. Oh, is it? Oh, well, you'll be, uh, you might be wrong, but I think it is. You'll be having a better, you'll be having a double that day then, won't you? Well, I don't normally bet on football and I'm on a bad run on boxing, so, yeah, just stick with the horses. <laughs> so, I best go anyway, the cast has just got back. All right then, mate, well, listen, you take care, Smido, and I'll speak to you yes. soon. Keep it up, Porky, keep on trucking. Thank Porky, you very much. Bye-bye. See you, pal. See you, pal. That was uh, my good friend from, uh, I think it's Wigan, isn't it? I've been to his house. Nice family man there, Adam Smith. He actually came to see me and Dennis a few weeks ago at the library for a bite to eat in Sheffield. Nice kid. He actually went up to the bar and paid for his own food, actually, and Dennis had a tab on. So that's about that. Nice kid. Respectful. Uh, he made some good points there, Smido. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to play uh, a few 
This has just got back. <laughs> I'm going to play you a few. Uh... Thanks for coming on to Channel Smido. You take care, pal. All the best to you and your family. Uh, nice to have you on channel. Uh, I'm going to play you a few. Uh... Videos now. Let's see if we can get them in. Let's see if we've got enough time left on channel. We'll have to do this as a part two then. So we'll go into a part two mode. Now I'll tell you what. We'll I'll do this on another video. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. All right. I better get ready for the gym, Anna.